It's getting close to Christmas. I hope you know this. For those of you who celebrate Christmas, it's getting close. Those of you who have other holidays that you celebrate around this time of year, the holidays are here. If you watch TV, obviously, the holidays have been here since, like, August. But the holidays are actually close. And that means it's time for another iteration of Top Linux Apps of the Month. And this time it's for December 2021. This is the last one of the year. When I started this series... I didn't expect it to be as popular as it has turned out to be, but I'm happy that everybody seems to enjoy it. So this month I have five really cool apps for you that I'm really excited to share. So why don't we go ahead and jump in with number five. So the first app on the list this month is an app called Peak. And this was submitted by somebody in the on Odyssey. This was submitted by BWP, BW Panda on Odyssey. Thank you for submitting this. And basically what Peak is, is... An, a little application that allows you to go through and record your screen, but instead of recording in video, it records it as a GIF. So you can go through and create GIFs of tutorials or whatever you want to do, even video, even vi of videos if you wanted to do so. And it's just really simple. So if you see on the screen in the B-roll, you can see me going through and recording my terminal, and it eventually will show up as a GIF towards the end of the, the B-roll. And it's just really cool. It's, there's not a lot to it. There are some settings that you can go through, but most of it's just changing the output format or changing the frame rate and stuff like that. There's not a ton of stuff to this, and it works really, really well. It even works well in tiling window managers. Now, you do have to enable the floating mechanism, so you'd have to get it into a floating mode in order for it to work really well, because it has to be floating over whatever you want to record. It's basically a transparent window, and then whatever is underneath that transparent window is what it's going to record. So that is Peak, and it's just an amazing little application, and it's definitely one that I'm going to be keeping installed, because while I don't write blog posts anymore, I do every once in a while have to show someone how to do something, and being able to do this and send them a gif of me doing the thing that I need to teach them is kind of awesome. I mean, that's just one use for it, but that is definitely what I'm going to be using it for. So that is Peak. The next app on the list is Annotator. And Annotator is an annotation app. Basically what it does is it takes a photo that you input to it and then it allows you to mark it up with shapes and text and, you know, like a pen and it allows you to crop it and you can add blur. It's really simple. It's really good. And the thing about it is that there's a ton of apps of like annotation apps out there. There's things that allow you to annotate PDFs and stuff like that, and they're all overly complicated or they don't work well in every situation. Annotator really works well. It's one of the first annotation apps that I actually found that works really well in a tiling window manager because a lot of the annotation apps try to get all fancy with their floating windows and stuff like that. This had nothing like that. So this worked really well for me. And it's, like I said, it's very, very simple. There's not a lot you can say about it. It just does what it's supposed to do. It allows you to go through and add things like numbers and stuff like that in sequence. It allows you to do blur. It allows you to do arrows in different shapes. You can use a pen tool, and you can change the color of all these things. You can add a magnifying tool, so it can kind of like magnify parts of the picture. And that's pretty much it. It can output to several different t uh, file formats, so you can always do that. You can also change the entire size of the canvas if you wanted to do so you could you could go through and crop it as well so it's actually very powerful but it does everything it does in just a one simple bar and there's not a lot to it there's no settings from what i could tell and you just do what you need to do export it as the whatever file type you want to export it as and you can go through and use the photo wherever you need to photo you know, use it as. So that is Annotator. There's not a lot to say. It's just really simple. So moving on. Okay, so the next one on the list is called Motrix. Now, for the most part, this is not an application that I find myself needing, but I know a lot of people do a lot of downloading of stuff, and they actually find themselves having a lot of downloads to manage, and especially if this is true is if you do things like torrenting. And while I'm not one to torrent a lot of stuff, anymore. I used to do this a lot. And while there are torrenting applications out there, and I 
probably would think that those are more suited towards torrenting because they have a lot more features and settings and stuff like that. Motrix is more than just a torrent client. It actually goes through and manages all of your downloads. That's what it's actually for. It just happens to work with torrents. So that means you could go through if you download like an, a lot of ISOs, for example, you can put them in here and then download them through this instead of having to download them through, say, Firefox. And the benefit of this, at least the benefit that I can think of, is that you can control them and save them for later. Because you, in this application here, you can actually pause all this stuff and then close the application, come back, and it's still there where it was before. And that's really cool. That's not something that you can really do with Firefox. You have to resume your downloads in Firefox in a different way. And sometimes they just start over. Sometimes it's messes with your files it's not it's not their download manager in firefox and other browsers just isn't all that great so motrix allows you to just go through and manage your downloads it's really great for if you're downloading a lot of files i can't see this being all that useful if you're just downloading every once in a while but if you download a lot of stuff a lot of big stuff this is really great and it's well designed it has a dark mode it has quite a few settings that you can go through and play around with and it's really good. So if you need a download manager, Motrix is free and open source, and it's good. So you should definitely give it a try. The next app on the list is called Typora. And Typora is a markdown text editor. And if for, for those of you who listen to the podcast, you'll know that I've been getting into markdown a lot now because I've been using markdown and Vim for a few weeks now. And it's just really good. Now, if you need a GUI text editor... I think Typora might be a good selection for you. Now, there is one thing I need to say about this. This is not free and open source. It is a free-to-use app as far as I can tell, but they do have a paid version. I'm not quite sure what you get for the paid version. It's like 15 bucks. From what I can tell, all the major features are there. I, I just didn't look into the paid version because I had no intention of telling you to pay for this application. But it is a really good application. So if you are watching the B-roll here, you'll see that it actually goes through and does pretty much what you'd expect to do. But instead of having like a preview pane off to the side, like a lot of Markdown editors do, this goes through and has the Markdown stuff take place of whatever you're typing after you've moved to a new line. So you can go through and do headings, you can do bolds, italics, all that kind of stuff. You'd be able to do tables, anything you can do in Markdown, you can do. There's also a ton of settings that you can play with. So you can alter how Markdown works. You can change the key bindings and stuff like that. Although on Linux, it doesn't appear to be as easy to change key bindings as it is on Windows or Mac, which is a little bit disappointing. You have to change a JSON file in order to change a key binding, which is not all that great. But uh, you can go through and do that. There are other settings that you can mess around with, including changing the theme, what it, what the application does on launch, uh, how the editor works, how you would import images and things like that. Now, the image thing is really cool. So one of the hardest parts about Markdown for me is always remembering the syntax for doing a for inputting an image and well, I'm kind of getting it now because I'm using it more often. It's one of those things where I really didn't use it very often, you know, in the past. So I just had to look it up. With this, if you remember the beginning syntax, and then you go get into the parentheses where you'd normally put into your file path, you can then something else shows up. You can click on that, and it brings up a file picker. So you can just go through and pick the file in a GUI file picker, and then it will go through and input the path just for you and inserts the image. It's really cool. So. Uh, if you are into editing text in a GUI fashion and you're not interested in using Vim, Typora might be an, an interesting option for you because it's actually really good. Now, I really wish it was open source. I don't normally do uh, non-open source apps on these lists, but this one was so good I just felt I wanted to share it. So uh, definitely give that a try if you're interested in using Markdown in a GUI text editor. That's Typora. Okay, so the last one on the list is called Gallery DL, and this is my favorite app of the month. This is the one that I had the most fun with. Now, basically what this application is, is a terminal-based picture downloader. And now, I know what you're thinking, that, what's so impressive about that? Well, what this will actually do, will go through and download whole galleries of images so for example and the one the example i'm going to show you in the b-roll is you can go to wallhaven.cc which is a really big wallpaper site search for something copy that url input it into gallery dl in the terminal 
it'll go through and download every single wallpaper in that search at the highest quality. That's cool, right? Now, in the B-roll, you'll see a brief glimpse of the sites that it supports. Admittedly, there's a lot of porn there. You really can't, you know, do anything about that. If that's your thing, nobody's going to judge you. But for me, the ones that are interesting are things like Twitter, things like Pinterest, things like Tumblr, things like the wallpapers, uh, Wallhaven one that I that I mentioned. There are a few other wallpaper ones on there as well. 500 Pixel is on there. So there's a lot of stuff like that. I, I believe, and I might be wrong about this, but I believe Deviant, Deviant Art is on there as well. So uh, there are dozens of sites on there that are supported. Again, admittedly, a lot of them are porn sites, but there are the non-porn sites that, that really interest me, and I find it really cool. Now, there are a ton of options, just like every terminal-based command kind of has, so I highly recommend you go through and read the man page, because the man page is going to give you all the flags that you need. Specifically, it's going to let you choose the directory that you download all the stuff to. Now, there is a way to set up a configuration file. So if you want to download from one of the sites that require a login, you'll need to set up that configuration file and enter your login credentials in the configuration file. That way it works when you go through and try to download whatever you're downloading from. I believe Twitter is that way. So if you want to download a gallery from Twitter, you'll have to have a login in order to do that. And that means you're going to have to set up that configuration file. The link to obviously all this stuff is going to be in the video description. And it has really good documentation, so it should be able to be fairly easy to set up. For me personally, the wallpaper thing was awesome. I, I went through and typed in Linux, and it showed me all the Linux uh, wallpapers. I in input it into the command line, and it just downloaded them. Now, the one thing I will caution you on is it doesn't seem to stop. So, if you go through and click on the, let's just say the anime search thing that's always at the top of Wallhaven... That thing has like 68,000 wallpapers in the search. As far as I can tell, Gallery DL just will continue to download until it reaches the end. Uh, I obviously did not give that a try, but I waited and it went over 100. So it just, as far as I know, it just kept going. So just keep that in mind that if you, especially if you're doing something where it will download a search result, where it will download all the images in a search result, that could have a lot of entries, and as far as I know, there's no upper limit to where it will stop. Now, I could be wrong about that, and it could be like 200 or something, and I was just too impatient to get there. But just keep that in mind. For me, this is an amazing application because I like collecting wallpapers. So, because this allows me to go through and th with, wall with Wallhaven and just download all the search results, I can go through and download as many wallpapers as I want and have them stored locally on my computer. That it also downloads them in the highest possible quality, like the highest resolution, is also just really awesome. It's You don't have to worry about finding uh, wallpapers that are just not all that, you know, like they're blurry or they're small, or they're cropped or something. You don't have to worry about that. It downloads the biggest possible resolution that Wallhaven has. So that is Gallery DL. It's my favorite app of the month. It's definitely the one that I'm gonna be for sure using over and over again. It's amazing. So those are our apps for the month. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have an app that you'd like to submit for next month's app or a future iteration of this list, you can leave those in the comment section below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or Odyssey. I check both of those comment sections. Just make sure if you're leaving a comment on YouTube that you don't include a link, because if you do, YouTube will just throw that right out and I'll never see it. So don't include the link, just the name of the app. I usually can do a pretty good Google job and find what you're talking about. So if you have an app suggestion, leave those in the comment section below. You can also send those suggestions to me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too, Patrick L, Primus, Sid A, Marcus, Meglin, Jack, Snipe Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Emma, Teus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The BSD's Rock, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.